Welcome to the third video in our proof of completeness and propositional logic. Today we're going to prove the maximal consistency lemma, which states that if gamma is a set of sentences in PL that is consistent, then gamma is a subset of at least one set of sentences that is maximally consistent. So to do this, we first need to prove two things. And if you remember, a maximally consistent set is a set that contains everything that is not a contradiction. So theorem 1.6. If a set gamma of sentences in PL is inconsistent, then some finite subset of gamma is also inconsistent. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to assume, we're going to call this gamma prime is inconsistent. And also we're going to say that gamma is a subset of gamma prime. So we have gamma prime as our big box, as our big circle, and we're going to have some smaller set in here, gamma. And what this says is that there's a contradiction somewhere in this space, then gamma is also going to have a something contradictory in it. We don't exactly know where gamma is, but we know there's going to be some subset that is inconsistent. So how do we prove this? Well, first of all, we're going to say that gamma union alpha is a contradiction because we know that there's something in the set that proves a contradiction. So what do we do from here? Well, here is a little cool trick. What we're going to do is we're going to, well, remember why we brought up enumeration. We're going to order all of our theorems and atoms, and we're going to order them in a list. So we're going to have alpha 1 all the way up to alpha n, which is the end of the list. And we're going to find the first inconsistent atom, or the first atom that makes the set inconsistent. So what we're going to say is that the finite subset, so we'll define gamma, our finite subset, as the set of the first one all the way up to that inconsistent atom. So this is going to be inconsistent because we found the first inconsistent atom and then we just merged it and kept it as part of some finite subset. So this set right here is our gamma in there. And this alpha is the one making it inconsistent. So this is our inconsistent. Now here's the question. Uh, can we remove it? And well the answer is sure. We do is we just take gamma and then we subtract alpha i and then it's going to be consistent. So you can remove it, but that's not the point of this proof. The point is to prove that some finite subset of gamma prime is going to be inconsistent and this is what we have proven with our little notion of our gamma here, which I have written in yellow. So here is our result as a proof. So we now know that if we have a big set gamma and it's inconsistent then there's going to be a smaller set that's also inconsistent. We're going to need this later. Now we're going to prove that if gamma is inconsistent then every superset is also inconsistent. So in this one we went from a big set to a small set and in this one here we're going to go from a small set to a big set. So this one's a little bit more obvious. So let's say if gamma proves an inconsistency, then gamma is also with some atom going to prove the inconsistency as well. So if we know that our 
gamma prime is a superset of gamma, then gamma prime is going to be is going to have alpha in it. So gamma prime is going to be able to prove alpha i. Therefore, gamma prime with alpha i is going to be inconsistent as well. And I, sometimes it seems like these proofs are a little too simple, just sometimes, but this is actually exactly what it is. It's pretty straightforward. We say, well, alpha's inconsistent, and, or sorry, gamma's inconsistent. Gamma proves alpha i, and this is the thing that makes it inconsistent. Well, gamma is part of this bigger thing, gamma prime. Therefore, gamma prime is also going to prove alpha i. Therefore, uh, gamma prime is going to be inconsistent. And this is the proof. This whole thing right here is the proof. This is probably one of the easiest ones to prove, because I think it's fairly intuitive. Uh, so now we know that we can go from small to big and big to small. It's fairly intuitive. So now we can finally prove that if a set of sentences in PL is consistent, then there's some subset that is maximally consistent. So here's what we're going to do with this one. And hopefully you'll be able to follow this because we do have to reference a couple things in there. So what we need to do is we need to suppose that our maximally consistent set is not consistent. So here's the thing. We know that it's maximal. So this is good. So we're going to assume it's not consistent, and then we're going to prove a contradiction, and then show that because we have a contradiction, it is consistent. So do you remember how we made this set? So recall how we made it. Well, we said that gamma i plus 1 was going to equal gamma i union alpha i if uh, these two right here, gamma i and alpha i, were consistent. And if not, then our gamma i is going to be just gamma i plus 1. So this is the other condition. So if gamma plus our extended gamma is inconsistent, then we know that there's going to be some subset of gamma prime, or a subset gamma prime of gamma plus, which is going to be also inconsistent. So this is from theorem 1.6. If you remember that if a bigger subset is inconsistent, there's a smaller subset that's inconsistent. So here we have this one. So now what we're going to do is, well, we have a smaller subset that's inconsistent. And this is a problem because, well, we know that gamma plus is made of gamma 1 and gamma 2 and a bunch of things all the way up to, well, gamma infinity, which we don't really have. So we know that some combo of these gammas is actually the same thing as gamma prime. Therefore, we should not have a contradiction because it doesn't make sense because we built all these different gammas to be consistent. So then we're saying we take the union of all these consistent sets and somehow we get an inconsistency? That, that doesn't make any sense because if there was an inconsistency, then it wouldn't be put into the set. So we've proven a contradiction here. And hopefully the wording was good enough that if there's anything you missed in writing, you can understand this. So we've proven a contradiction, therefore it is consistent. And I should write that gamma plus is consistent. So with this, we have now proven 
that if we have a set gamma of sentences, then if it's consistent, this gamma is a subset of at least one set of sentences that is maximally consistent. And I should point out that this theorem here wasn't exactly a direct proof, but we can just say that gamma extends to gamma plus because we've proven that we can extend it. And then we just employ this proof strategy here. And there you have it. There's the maximal consistency lemma proven along with two subproofs. We're going to introduce another proof next time, which will be video four of five, and it's going to be good. We're going to talk about the consistency lemma. We're not going to prove it, but we're going to prove two subproofs that will help prove it in the fifth video, which will then lead directly to the end of completeness. So hopefully you're following along. If not, just keep plugging away at it. Find some textbooks online. They're all pretty much going to be the same. Uh, if you have any serious questions, just post them in the comments below. I will probably respond to it because I don't have a huge backlog and nobody leaves questions anyway. So yeah, I'll answer it. It'll be good. It'll be fun times. I'll see you in video four or five for completeness.